What's going on, guys? Real talk to you. What's happening? It is a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. I know a few guys are like, what? He's shooting on a Saturday? Yes, I'm shooting on a Saturday. And we have a nice little show for you today, too. And I see, oh, yeah, I see a few of you guys already clipping in there. I see you guys. Okay. I'm actually share this one through a through few groups. So give me a second while I share it to a few of the groups here. Because I know when I share it to your groups, you guys can do the same thing and share it for me also. Um, we also have an author in the building today. <laughs> She's getting her phone I'm ready, too. I'm trying to get ready, too. <laughs> Sorry. She's getting her phone ready, too. So we're all trying to make sure we share it to enough places, enough faces to see this. And I see I already got about two or three people chiming in. Give me one second. Make sure everything is good. So, real talk to you. It is a Saturday. This is one of our real ones that I've been telling you guys that we're going to be doing. I'm glad you guys are tuning in. Um, today, of course, Saturday, we are blessed with having an actual author on the show. I have an author on the show. We're going to be talking about a book that she actually wrote. And I think what's most interesting about this is that she wrote this book in a short period of time. And it's about a topic that you guys know is near and dear to my heart um, because I talk about this on the show pretty often, too. And it's one of the things that a lot of people go through and just don't know how to handle. And that is divorce. The name of her book is Happily Ever After Divorce. And today we are sitting with Jennifer, <laughs> who is adjusting her phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jennifer L. Speed. I call her Speedy. <laughs> Hello, guys. So, how are you doing today? I'm doing great today. I'm so sorry for the delay, just some phone trouble. I'm doing great. You're doing all right with us. How no are you doing today? Right. Our people, I'm doing good. Our people understand what's going on. They know every time we start that. Yes, I know it's not Thursday. Uh, go, Jen, go. We already got people <laughs> saying go, Jen. Look, one of your people, huh? <laughs> somebody said go, Jen, go. Go, go. You got uh, somebody named uh, Gobi Wallace? Uh, Gabe. Gabe, I'm sorry. Gabe, I, I, what's up? Sorry, Gabe. My eyesight is Gabe, 40 and Gabe same. Gabe is my publisher. He okay, my okay. Publisher. There we go. I got to I'm sorry. My eyesight is not the same as it used to be, Gabe. I do apologize. What's going on, Keisha? I see you in there. All right. So, hey, today we are talking about Happily Ever After Divorce with Jennifer L. Speed and her book that she wrote. Now, I met Jennifer at the Ultimate Women's Expo here in Atlanta. I had the opportunity to go there, and I was, of course, doing what I normally do, guys, out and about. And I saw this book. And the title is what caught me, Happily Ever After Divorce. So when I think of the words happily ever after, in my brain, the very first thing I'm thinking is like those Disney movies, like happily marriage. ever after. Beautiful marriage. Beautiful. <laughs> because all we were taught as kids is that happily ever after means that it goes on forever. But then I saw the words divorce. I was like, oh, that's different. And it <laughs> caught my attention. I liked it. So I, I had to meet this young lady and kind of get the story behind the book. And of course, that's what I have on the show. So the first thing, I guess, is where can people find this book? Uh, the book is on Amazon. You can order it by um, ebook or you can order a hard copy. And um, it's all through Amazon. Go there, look it, at it under my name, Jennifer Speed. That's S P as in Peter E E D. Uh, exactly how it sounds. Or happily ever after divorce. There you go. What about social your social media? So I'm on Facebook. There's a Facebook page, Happily Ever After Divorce on Facebook. Um, or you can go to my Facebook page, Jennifer Foster Speed, F-O-S-T-E-R Speed. Mm, love name in there, huh? <laughs> That's just so people can find me. <laughs> okay. Well, people are already asking about you sharing your inspiring story. I have a Monica here who's uh, checking in. Monica. Jamaican. Monica. Hey, Monica. What's happening, Monica? So these people don't realize, like, the show, the way the show airs, it airs right now. This will be on for, like, it'll be continuously <laughs> airing. So, yeah, you're right. We want to hear the story because it's going to continuously keep sharing. So we know where to find the book. We know the name of the book. Now we kind of got to get some background behind the book. I mean, everybody knows divorce is one of those things in this society that people look down upon or is frowned upon. For some odd reason, I don't really know why. Because if you get married to someone and you don't like that said someone anymore, you shouldn't stay there. <laughs> I mean, that's just how you go. I mean, think about how marriage works, first of all. You're in this big world. You see this one human being and go, hey, you human, I like you. And I want to be with you. <laughs> Forever and ever and ever. And I have no idea if I'll change or if you change, but I want to be with you forever. Yeah, that doesn't always work out. I mean, I don't have the actual numbers, but we've heard these numbers before as far as marriage first year, or not sorry, marriage in a generally first marriage. Divorce is usually like, what, 40 to 50%? Right. Second year, it's usually like 60 to 70%. 
and then thirty after that, y'all just you know y'all getting married, but it's pretty much like dating. Y'all getting married and y'all getting divorced. Getting married, y'all getting divorced. So, I mean, marriage is a very scary, fun, interesting thing. And I have tons of ideas that I want to throw at you about this type of stuff. But I want to kind of get behind this book here and find out what made you write this book, besides the obvious title. <laughs> so, what made me write the book is that, I mean, I actually had a beautiful marriage. My story is a little bit different. I was married for 11 years, and I had an incredible marriage to my best friend, I his best friend as well, and we just had a blast together all the way to the end, but the problem was he did change, but he changed in a way that wasn't um, the norm. It wasn't that we grew apart. We didn't grow apart. We didn't have troubles our, we didn't have issues of parenting. We didn't have those things. We changed, we, we, uh, divorced because he just simply wanted something different. He wanted to be in an open marriage, which is something that I'd never signed on to something that we had never, ever, ever, ever discussed because I wouldn't, I wouldn't get involved with something like that. <laughs> and so he just wanted something so totally different than what we ever discussed uh, prior. So the reason I wrote the book was because it wasn't a normal marriage. It was a, um, it was, he still wanted to stay married. He said he still wanted to die with me. He still mm-hmm. wanted to be there with me, for me, with me for everything. He said he didn't want to change a single thing about me. He didn't want to change a single thing about our marriage. He just wanted to have more. And so that was the... Sounds like a man to me. I'll see what the problem is. Yeah, you're right. That sounds like a man, right? <laughs> one more. By the way, you sold, just, you've already sold one book. <laughs> Someone literally just purchased the book. Really? Hey, okay. Keisha, what's going on? That's what's up. Thank you, Keisha. Keisha, it's a good, it's a good one for you to show. Tune in to. It's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> yeah, so he just he just wanted more. And my thing was like, but how do you get more than 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 perfect? And so... Not that we're going to just talk, talk about this topic, but this is how deep it got. Okay. Um, so we went to counseling. Went to counseling five times. As most people try to. Yes. Now, did you guys go to counseling prior to the marriage? We did premarital counseling. And then, of course, the counseling afterwards was kind of, not afterwards, it's in between to say, hey, let's see what we can say. So the counseling, the first counseling came uh, six years into the marriage. And it was because he simply said, I want to have sex with other women, which to me, not abnormal. Um, no, not at all. Yeah, not, not abnormal. <laughs> if you're married to or committed to the same person long enough, yeah. at some point, you probably will want to have sex with other people. The issue is you don't do the thing. You, so he, you he brought it to idea. you. And the reason that this is so timely and so crazy uh, as far as timing, do you get a chance to watch Breakfast Club? I have not seen it. Okay, so for those of who just saw Bre- the last Breakfast Club, you saw Ronnie DeVoe and his wife. Oh my gosh, I forgot her name at the moment. And they were married for X amount of years, and she came to him and Mm. said, I want an open marriage. Okay. And it's just so interesting because this topic has been coming up and coming up. Now, I'll go ahead and spoiler alert. They ask a question. If someone came to them now and asked if they could do an open marriage, what would their response be? Both of them at the same exact time said, hell no. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so it didn't work out. Yeah, see? It actually did work out and didn't work out. Because for them, it was, and I'm not saying this is like, you know, oh, you should go back and rethink this. I'm just saying for them, their story was more along the lines of, we're going to try this open marriage. And it was unique, though. I'll be honest, fellas, this open marriage is unique. The wife, uh, his his wife, Ryan DeVoe, was like, hey, I want to be with other women. And I'll be okay with you being with other women. That's not fair. (laughs) What if she doesn't want to be with other women? She chose. Oh, okay. That was her decision. Okay. She made the decision. She said she wanted to have okay. an open marriage and she could explore well, she could women. Explore women. Okay. And he can, if it's okay if he gives other women, she won't go be tripping off. Now, the interesting thing about that is that they tried it. They said it worked at first. They were going on dates with other women is when they'd be honest, or yeah, other women, and they'd be honest about it. But eventually, I guess, it the jealousy kicked in. See, one mm-hmm. of the things about an open marriage, which guys, we're so sensitive, we don't realize how sensitive we are in our egos. It's okay when I go out on Tuesday night with, you know, with Bianca and him, you know. <laughs> but then when she's out with whoever she's out with on Wednesday, and I'm at home by myself. I'm thinking, like, where's she going? What, what they, where they go to? You know, that jealousy kicked in. And Ronnie talked about that. He was like, how jealousy kicked in. And he was wondering what she'd be doing. And what happens is when jealousy kicks in, then you got to then have a little bit of human nature. Revenge kicked in. I know she's doing something, so I'm going to do this. Well, she probably did this, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. So it's always they're trying to one-up each other, and it never really works. Mm-hmm. They got to a point, like I said, spoiler alert, because I'm not going to 
talk about their story, I want to hear about your story, where they realized they got to the point of the brink of divorce, went through counseling, went through a whole bunch of spiritual type of journey or whatever you may want to call it, and they realized that's not what they want with those parents. They want each other. And they're choosing to grow old with each other without anyone else's involvement. And um, I'm actually, they actually have a walk coming up. Happily Married Walk, I think is what it's called. Really? And I'm trying to go there and be a sponsor for, for that show, uh, for that particular walk. So we'll hopefully shoot live from there too. So that's a heads up on that. But let's get back to your story. So he wanted, obviously the counseling um, midterm, you guys tried counseling. So tell me about the counseling. How'd that go? So we went to counseling um, the first time, which was at six years when he first brought it up. Okay. And to me, I was like, you know, I know my husband, like, he's not going to do it. However, I don't even, I don't want him to, I don't want this to sneak further into his brain. I didn't think it was abnormal. Um, and, and I, and okay. so, I, and so I, I appreciate the honesty because I didn't think he'd really do it. You're sharing your honest feelings. That's great. And so, but at the time our son was uh, seven, eight months old. And so I took it that that was my fault because I was not who I normally was. So you, because you thought I had you played a role? I thought I played a role. What role as a, as a woman? It's pretty interesting you think you play because men sometimes have that issue that their woman will have a baby and then she doesn't feel sexy anymore. And then it's like, we don't care. You are sexy. sexy. What was that? Oh, you. <laughs> what sexy? <laughs> <laughs> it, <laughs> it was... It wasn't me as in not feeling good about myself. It was the fact that my son, for eight months, okay, for eight months, I never slept more than three months at, three hours at a time. Oh, it was a time thing. It was a time thing. You so weren't spending I don't much ever, time. I don't ever sleep. Or you thought you weren't. Right. I don't sleep. He's breastfed. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm up all night. I don't want to do anything other than just make it through every day because I have this, this son that doesn't sleep. Uh, well, not doesn't sleep, that wants to eat all the time. So... So what I thought my role was is that I was no longer available to him in the way that I used to be. Okay. And so I took, I took, it was the only time that I took a role in that or felt like that was my fault. So I said, okay, I get myself back together and then we're good. And so apparently it was not me. And the following year we went to counseling and the following year we went to counseling and we went to counseling four times and on the fourth time he said, um, I want to have believe he said I want to have an open marriage or Oh, something. he hadn't mentioned it prior he to that. He hadn't mentioned open. It was just I want to have sex with other people, with other women. Which is pretty much what that is. Yeah. And so the Cheating fourth with a year. Pass. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Cheating with a hall pass. Ain't nothing then, wrong with a hall pass. <laughs> and then, but and here's, the thing, here's the thing that women will do. They'll start to do things outside of what they even believe just so they can keep their marriage. I mean, we know a lot of celebrity couples that have been in hall passes. I really believe, I think it was Monique that said her husband had, yeah. a, had a hall no, pass. No, but they're open, though. They're 100% my, open? To my knowledge, they are open. Wow. They may have started with the hall pass, but I think they are open. Okay. And I know a lot of, um, I guess by default, a lot of women that date athletes, celebrities, get their they big hall passes. They live with hall passes. <laughs> yeah. You want a baller, you gotta deal you with it. You have to deal with it. You know? A baller will get you there. That's all right. Good, good, good. How you uh, doing? So he wanted a hall pass, and it was one of those things where you really couldn't give him the hall pass that you wanted, right? So, yeah, so fifth year, he, fourth year, he says that. So, fifth year, uh -huh. and so we worked through that, and then the fifth year, it was, I can tell you for certain what it was. He said, um, I want to. I can no longer be in a monogamous marriage. Okay. And so, at so he was that learning point, new words. That's what that yeah, was. he was learning new he was words. He was Sesame. doing research. <laughs> <laughs> he was watching and he Sesame Street, learning new words. He was different things. How to how to put it right. As and a man, I can see it right now. I open the dictionary. What do I want? Ooh, I want <laughs> that. That's, that's what I need. <laughs> no just more a, monogamous. Look, you gotta everything. understand me. If I point to this word, she got to know what I'm talking. Monogamous. I don't want that no more. <laughs> I don't want that. He said polyamory. Wants to be in a, he is polyamorous and wants to be in a polyamorous marriage. Well, he signed his paperwork to be polyamorous. Is there a membership for that? I'm, I'm just asking for a friend. Here in Atlanta. For a friend. <laughs> yeah, not a friend. <laughs> I mean, just ask for a friend. For a friend. So, um, so that's what he wanted. So, so we went through. Did you entertain we went, it all even for one second? I did. I did. Okay. So I entertained it. I didn't. We didn't actually practice it. But no, I I'm saying, but what was your thought process like? like? What my thought process was. This is my dude. Like this is my best friend. Like I don't want to ever be without this man. Okay. Ever. I did not want to be without him. So I said, you know what? Maybe, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can. And so in my mind, I tried to process it, but 
I couldn't, I couldn't get there because every night he would be out. He drives Uber, so what oh. he was doing out, I don't know if he was driving or doing other things, but so the he was early. supposed to be out driving Uber. So and there was so, a point that you agreed. No, no, no. This is in my mind. This is in my mind. Oh, you didn't say that to him? No, I'm not sharing that. (laughs) This is in my mind. I'm thinking about it. My man would have been like, like, man. I'm like, can I I really do this? Like, I love you, baby. Yeah, no, no. But see, here's why I know I couldn't. Because I'm I'm up all night long, can't sleep, anxious, can't eat, can't sleep, can't do anything. Looking out the window, waiting for him to hurry up and come home. Wondering. You didn't think he was doing anything. Well, at this point, I don't know because now that he said that's what he wants. I don't know. But I guess you guys have always open communication, so he was letting you know. Well, so on day two, so he tells me this on a Monday evening. Okay. On a two, so he asked me to read this book that I don't even want to put out there to people. I think it's <laughs> but he asked me to read this book about um, making open marriages work and introducing okay. other people into your life. Okay. And or into your into your bedroom, really. And um, so I Scientology I, type stuff, right there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he said, I'd like you to read this book over two weeks and um, then we'll go to counseling after you read the book. So I Did said, you read the I, book? I listened to it in a day. I tuned my ears over time to yeah. get to 1.75 speed and I listened to this entire book over about eight, nine hours. Really? And so. You a good one. I said well, a lot to put. I, I, hey, I, you want me to read a book? I'm going to read the book. Now, let's okay, you're trying to save that marriage. Two weeks. Yeah, you're trying to save that marriage. Actually, now you're trying to save it. You're trying to whatever this is as a marriage. Exactly. At this point, y'all wasn't thinking divorce. It was just more like, let's It was, let's see. Let's what see. This is For me, it was, let me help him. Give him okay. the reasons why not. For him, it was, show her why so. Okay. And so, after reading the book, I called him and I flipped out and I was like, I'm done. This is what you want. I'm done. We're getting divorced. <laughs> And I am no longer your it's wife. It's a good thing you had a real book. If you had a real page, I'm, no, this is not happening. <laughs> Throw a page I know, right? If I had actually had the book in my hand. So I said, this is, I said, I'm done. I'm not your wife anymore. I'm divorcing you. So wait a minute. We are separating. Who brought up the first D word? You or him? I did. You brought the D Day word two. first. Day two after that. Day first. one, actually. Day one. I said, well, then we're getting divorced. Mind you, we had been to counseling yeah. four times prior. Okay. So now I'm like, you know what? Then we're getting divorced. You brought the D yeah. word up. So how do you take it when he first heard it? He just heard it. It, it oh. wasn't. It, it wasn't. It wasn't talked about. Well, let's not. It was more so talked about. Let's work on uh, you learning more about what it is that I want. Him, me, learning more about what he wants. So before we get next, parents. Are your parents married still? They are. Mine are. His have always had a. Uh, his were married, but they never lived as married people. They're not married now. Okay. But they never lived as married people. They weren't in the same house. They so created children not just, in the same house. We're building this whole what he's used to. What he's used to and what I'm used experience. Because exactly. you guys know what I say. Every time someone tells you something about themselves, know that what we're talking about is their experiences, not necessarily the actual definition of the word. And that's kind of what comes into play a lot of times. Someone says, oh, I'm in love. Well, love means totally something different to everyone. That's the thing about the word love. You have to understand it's defined by experiences, not by looking in a dictionary. Exactly. So that's that's why I'm going by his experience of what I guess the word marriage is. Absolutely. That's why you should marry someone that has come from something that you, what you want your marriage to look like. Ah, that ooh, that's a jewel right there. Oh my gosh. Okay, that just hurt me. I thought about that. It's hard to go back and look at well, it's not hard. You talk to someone and they're whoever they are, and you go, hey, look, you know what? Is your mom and dad married? What, what, sometimes yeah, like what was their dynamic like? We talked about that in our premarital, pre-marital counseling. Yeah. What I came from and what he came from. But you were still I okay with doing that because you were already in. You was already in, though. I already know. And we all, we, we, we put it all in. At that point, I'm like, I can make it different. This will be different, right? I, I never considered that that, because he was a good man. Of course he and, was. And he was, he loved his mom. He was all about his mom. So, for me, I love good men letting you. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I'm not gonna not marry you because your parents weren't divorced. Yeah. I mean weren't married. But now I see that what you saw and what you thought were normal, they do play. So you brought the D word, no dynamics now of how you guys were raised, uh, and to understand the word marriage, now you bring up the D word. Has divorce ever played a role in your before you got married in your life? No, I, I'm or... not. My my um, not that there's not divorce around me, but uh, both sets of grandparents were married okay. till the end. That's good. Um, my parents are still married. Um, I have aunts and uncles that 
because there's more marriage than divorce. What about close friends? People that can say, yeah, I did this girl because it was I had to because this this was going on. What about close friends? You mean currently? No, before you got divorced. Uh, I close friends are all married. That's good. I think close friends. So are what all about married. close friends' parents? Are they all married? Or are they they're just, all just married. Guys out there doing what they they're, do. They're all you know what I mean? They're sharing space. They're all married. <laughs> Oh God, we ain't gonna talk about that, but they're all married. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and hopefully happy. <laughs> so the next question is, so D words brought up, you know going forward that obviously this direction going in, does he have any pushback? So no. So No pushback? Not that there's no pushback, but From we him. but we he is open to counseling. So he's no, after counseling, you took D word oh, out. Oh, there. after, after well, no, D word is day one. And then he's like, okay, well, come on, let's try it. Let's, let's, let's counsel. Let's see what we can do. Oh, that's so the second time he dropped it. So, so Monday night, mm -hmm. he says, I have to be in a, I, I cannot be monogamous, right? This is, this is after the fourth time counseling. Okay. And so I said, well, then we're getting divorced. He goes, well, before that, listen to this book. Okay. Read it for two weeks. And uh, then we'll go to counseling. Last ditch effort. I read it. Listened in eight hours. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Money now. What's gonna so this? my thing is, we're not gonna wait two weeks. I'm gonna do it now. Okay. So after I read it, which is day two, uh -huh. I say we're getting divorced. I'm not your wife. We're officially separated. At the end of August, because I have other stuff going on. At the end of August, we're done. This I'm is, divorcing you. This is 2016. 20. Where are we now? 1917. 2017. Summer 2017. Summer 2017. So. Of course, I don't want to be divorced, but I'm showing him like, yo, I'm serious. Like, I'm yeah, serious. Are, I'm not doing it. So then we go to counseling. We do all the counseling. And so yeah. in the counseling, which is where I'm trying to get to, like, it's not even me. It's that yeah. he wants more. We're in counseling, and the counselor says, um, asks him about how he's feeling. And he says, I'm 90% satisfied with my marriage. That's a he big said, number. 90%. but 10% of me is unfulfilled. And he said, and the reason is because I need to have these relationships with these other women. Okay. He said, it's not just sex. He said, I want to have sex with other women, but I want to build relationships. I don't want to meet someone that seems really cool and cut it off because I have a wife. I want to be able to date them, but date them. I want to be able to like, like learn them and be friend and be more than friends and and just do what comes natural. Are you dropping? And so yeah, yeah. So wait a minute. So, so it gets worse. It gets worse. So that's crazy, right? Yeah, that's crazy. And so then he says, "I'm 98 percent sexually satisfied." He says, "I can have I can have mind blowing sex and lay next to her, and two percent of me is unfulfilled." That's more like who does that? I don't that? know that two percent is. <laughs> Look, who does that? First of all, I gotta I gotta admire this brother's game. To even hit you with that over the head. Right. <laughs> like who does that? He got confidence out of this world. Cause I don't know about if they delivered that sentence. First of all, but you if you you wouldn't. That's I, the abnormal. That's abnormal to feel like you're that satisfied. And it was. More. Do you think he might have been probably playing to your emotional side and didn't want to tell you more, no. or he just okay? No. So so okay. now you didn't you didn't went through counseling, he didn't hit you with, over the head with some stuff that numbers that don't make sense. Um and now it's like, all right, this is the direction we're going in. What's and it? so I basically I think I I think I trailed it out because I had to get I tried everything. I tried right. everything. Like, okay, this is what I didn't do. I need to do this. Or you know what, maybe he needs to see a female I mean a male counselor. Or maybe this, or maybe the, and I, I exhausted all avenues. I was like, I'm I can't. I can't. I'm done. Yeah. And so the reason I wrote the book was because, well, several people said you need to write a book or it's yeah. going to be a lifetime. Because just so you guys know, we're leaving some details out because all this is in the book. That's why I keep trying <laughs> it's to. It's all in the book. It's all in the book. You got to get this book on Amazon. Check it out. Happily Ever Divorced. And so. Ever After Divorce. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For the audio version that people hear of this, Happily For Ever audio, yes. After Divorce. And so I wrote the book because it was so abnormal. And like the counselor said, she said. Um, most people that come to me come to me because there's a problem. Mm. She said, you don't have a problem. She said, you don't have a problem with your marriage and you don't have a problem with your spouse. Yeah. She said, so I'm concerned that you're going to try to fulfill this 90% by, um, and not like fill the 10% and knock off the bottom 90%. And that's why I wrote the book because it's so abnormal. It's a really interesting 
full so of the, drama stories. The book about, talks about your journey in dealing with, I'm guessing, a lot of your ups and downs a lot mentally. Of the ups and downs. The fact that you even told me that you were even cons you consider the thought of a polyamorous. <laughs> you can't even say. Uh, I can't even say it because I ain't been to the dictionary. Go look it up and say that's what I want. But the fact that you were even able to even entertain that thought of a polyamorous type of relationship is interesting because it puts a woman in a lot of different places. And then the book talks about your mental journey in that, right? Right. It talks about that, and so ultimately, what I want people to get from the book is to see that don't what you. Here's the thing: nobody gets married to get divorced. No. So you want to fight through this because marriage. To me, it's very sacred. It's not like, ah, oh, just get divorced. Like, to me, it's very sacred. But women go through, no matter why they're getting divorced, or no matter why that relationship is breaking up, they all go through the same feeling. They go through that fear. Can I? Will I be with myself by the, for the rest of my life? Like, am I going to die alone? Do I want to die alone? So that um, jumps into the next thing, too, I wanted to talk about as far as topic-wise, because women, all you're taught from little girls is that you have to be married, correct? You have to find that one person. You got to have that happily ever after type of relationship. So now as a woman being faced with divorce and having kids and being faced with, okay, there's an opportunity where you're going to actually be in this world by yourself. Yeah. That's scary. what's in that book and how she gets through it. That's what you guys got to check out because that is what's going to hit you over the head. Is you're taught this, ladies, growing up. If you see a woman you haven't seen in 10 years and you walk up to her, the first thing she's going to say to you is, oh, you look nice. You look this. They're going to say, so you're married? You got kids? Yep. That's how women treat other women. Exactly. I see a brother I ain't seen in 10 years. I'm and like, yo, what's up? Are. It's like, man, what's going on? What you doing? I'm here. What kind of car you drive? That's it. We don't talk about that stuff because we're not we're not bred up that. We're not raised to believe that marriage completes us. Women, you're raised to believe that marriage completes you in some type of way. Or you're less than if you're not. So that's a huge step you got to take mm -hmm. to get over that mental, social construct of this is how it has to be. Because you don't have to be that way. Right. And, you, and that... And that's the thing, like you have to go from that idea of this is going to be my man forever to I can do this on my own. Like I can do this. One of, you know, one of the things he asked me when I, when I was like, okay, done, like I'm done. And we were discussing like how to split the house and what to do with the children. And he said, well, can you pay for all this? And you know what? I'll be <laughs> honest. I didn't know, but to me, it didn't matter. And that's what I said. I said, I'll figure hey, it out. And he over like, yo, you sure you won't do this? You right? got that money? <laughs> see, for some women, that's the deterrent. They're it like, I can't. Yeah, like they're afraid. And so the book talks about all the fears of being afraid of doing it on your own. Can you financially afford it? What does being a single mom look like? Mm. Um, you know, what is it going to look like if I never find anyone? Like, what is my life going to be? Like, what is going to happen? What is this going to, what's it going to look like on the other end? It's good point. And so many fears. And so, you know, I wrote the book so people could see that, like, look, these fears are real, but you have to face them. You have to face them and decide, like, I'm worth more. I'm worth more. I'm worth more, and I can do it. I'm capable. And you know what I realized as I was writing that book? I was like, yo, I was I'm the bomb. Like, before marriage, <laughs> before him, I'm the bomb. What you? Like I, oh my God! Here's the thing: I'm capable of all things, of yeah. all things, even before him. And I didn't, sh I didn't dull my light when I got married. But I realized that because I was married, I didn't show my full self because I didn't have to. I had a partner. Message. And so when I was going through the divorce process, I was like, "Yo, I got this!" And I started to remind myself of all the things I did before he existed. Okay. And so what women need to realize is. You, you can do this all by yourself. You can't. It's going to hurt. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be a huge learning curve, but you can do it. You can overcome it. You just have to decide that I'm not having that for my life. You just have to decide that I can do better. I can have more. And those are some of the steps that are in the book, which is pretty interesting. So you guys, make sure you get the book happily ever after divorce. So you're getting through this whole situation now where you're probably drumming up all types of old things that you're going through. So you're, you're kind of, I guess, Chipping away at your your foundation that you forgot that you had. Exactly. And you're able to see yourself now in a whole new light prior to this man that defined you, right? I hate saying that, but yeah. And that's how it's it is. True. Like, it's ladies, true. come on, let's be it's honest. True. Us men, we define you in a sense that if you have a man, doesn't matter if he's a good man or a bad man. The fact you have a man is the definition of you know yourself. It's like as women judge you by that. So the next thing I want to jump into because all that stuff is in the book. So please de definitely guys get the book. The process of actually writing this book, that Man. is what astonished me because if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> it took you six months? It took me it took me six months, but 
The 80% of the book took me six weeks. Six weeks? Six weeks. Y'all hear that? Six <laughs> weeks to write a book. First of all, he pissed her off so much. <laughs> She was like, I know I'm trying, but I'm going to keep on going. Now, what's even more crazy is that you actually have a time-consuming position in the actual real nine to five. It's yes. time-consuming. I mean, you see after, I believe, kids and things like that, right? I have two children. Well, the two kids is one thing. Welcome to your actual nine to five. That, 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 yes. Your actual nine to five is something that's time-consuming, too, and very technical, not technical, but very, I guess, involved. And you took time out of that day in, day out to actually write. So what was your I process... Did. For those aspiring, but like, what's your what was your your process? What did you do daily, weekly? How did you go after those goals? For that. So, uh, it, this is different because most people just don't function right, like angry. that. I don't. <laughs> no, so you were I, angry. I, I, don't, I don't. I don't know what it was. But um, so just by happenstance, I went to my friend's um, book signing, Monica, the first person you mentioned that was on here. Monica. Yes, Monica. Okay. I oh, wait a minute. That's corn, Monica? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> corn. If you're on here, man, I don't know why I'm looking down at camera here. <laughs> corn, if you're on here, man. What's going on? That's my that brother Monica. right there. Yes. Me and Flick like that first. Hey, that's what it goes. So I go to, I went to her book signing. Oh, hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. Funny story, though, how I met them. <laughs> So I see this dude out there promoting. I don't promoting. know. What is your version? <laughs> so I see this guy out there promoting this book. Now, mind you, I didn't see other name of the book. So this guy's out there talking about, hey, you got to check out this book. You know, come by. Come do it. And I happen to pop my head out, and I see him promoting this book. So I'm thinking, oh, that's pretty cool. The brother promoting the book. <laughs> the book says, happily ever after the book. I said, you promoting the book that she divorced you from? <laughs> I was literally walking to him like, hey, man, how good is the book that you still here promoting for your wife? At, your ex wife, right, after happened. she left you, he was like, No, no, that ain't my book, that's her book. I'm like, Oh, okay. It was a funny thing. You had to put like this. You had to be, you had to be there because he thought, like, this dude's promoting his ex wife's book about their divorce. That's what? how good it was. He's like, Look, look I messed up with this book on point. <laughs> All right, sorry to cut you off. So, you went to Monica's. So, I go to Monica's book signing, which by coincidence was my, would have been my 12th wedding anniversary. And so, I go there and I meet. Uh, her publisher, Gabe, the other gentleman. I see Gabe. What's up, Gabe? Gabe? We'll see you out there, Mr. Wallace. Yeah, so I meet him, and um, I told him about the book. And um, I was just like, listen, I have this story. I'm writing a book. And and um, he said, well, so we sat down several days later. He said, well, tell me tell me about the book. So I tell him the story, like beginning to end. I tell him the whole story. Yeah. And um, he says, well, what do you want to get out of it? And I said, I just want to tell a good story. He said, but you didn't go through all this to tell a good story. Yeah. He said, you went through this to help other people, which by nature, and that's how. And therapy, too. That was your therapy, yes. right? Yes. And so I realized, like, look, this is going to help some people. And I had friends that were reading pieces of the stories I was writing it. And some of them was helping. I had one good friend that was going through her own um, separation at the time and was helping her a lot. And he said, do you want to become a, a, a motivational speaker? I was like, absolutely. I've always wanted to, didn't know how to there do it. There you go. So my motivation was, one, I want to, I want to have a book sign like she did. Okay. I was excited about all those people coming there for her. Yeah. So I said, I want to have a book signing. I want to sign some books. I want to stand on stage and speak. There you go. And so that was my motivation. I was like, I'm going to get this book out just like that. And so I did. It. And I told him, I said, four weeks. I said, four weeks, I'm done. I'm hand you my book. I'm going to be finished. And, um... It was six weeks, but whatever. Well, it wanted to be six weeks instead of four. I wrote a book in four. six weeks. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so 80% of it was written in, in six weeks, yeah. What was your daily process when you came home from work? What was so you I would put my children to bed by 9, and I would write until about 12, 1 in the morning until my eyes can stay awake. You wrote stories? You wrote just stories? I wrote like, whatever I, I was feeling for the day. Wow. So I would say, which story do I want to tell today? And I'd say, today I want to tell about that time when I was in the park and went crazy and this and that, so I'd write that. So I'm a registered nurse. And so I would come home beat, like yeah. dead beat. But I was like, That's what I'm talking I told about. this man I'm going to be done in four weeks, and I'm going to be done in four weeks. That's great. And so every, so I worked four days a week. Every night I would um, write a story. If I had to work, I would write a story. When I didn't have to work on that fifth, on that fifth day, I would write three to four stories. Every other weekend I had my children, so on the other world weekend I would write um, anywhere from five to eight stories. Okay. And I just started writing all these stories. Gabe and I um, made an outline. I was writing all these stories to fill in the outline. Yeah. And when it was done, I had all these stories literally printed out. And I was like, 
Now, how do I organize this story? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's the publishing company Gabe works for? Um, GP Publishing. GP Publishing. Check that GP out, folks. GP Publishing. Obviously, yep. Gabe is out there doing that work. That's right. Check it out. He is. Amazing guy. Amazing guy. And so, um, so yeah, he and I worked together. I wrote the book beginning to end. And then after that, I gave it to him. I said, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> and so he, he put the rest of it together. But um, it was an amazing process. To this day, I, people say, well, how did you write a book? Aren't you nurse? Don't you have children? And my children are young. They're, I'm one of those people. Six and ten. Yes, you were. <laughs> so I was like, and you I was what? like, I don't know. Like, I just had to write it, so I wrote it. I just took the time out, and I was a zombie Amazing. for six weeks. But I had gotten used to not sleeping. Yeah. Because of my divorce process, because like I working. never slept. Oh my god. So I had got used to not sleeping. So the divorce process is crazy, obviously, and and we'll, obviously that's why you got to check out the book to know more about, you know, the whole process and different things. And I would recommend this. Read the book if you're happily married or if you're going through divorce or you're already divorced. Absolutely. Understand exactly, you know, what's what's happening and where you can be at mentally and the journey that you have to take. Definitely check this book out, Happily Ever After Divorce, uh, Ever After Divorce. I got to make sure I say it right. Check it out on Amazon. But yeah, the whole process of being divorced and to go through that takes a lot out of you. It does. And it pulls you away from, I guess for you, you were able to get to your, your actual, you know, your actual foundation was chipping away at the thing that you Protect yourself or protect yourself, which right. happened to be, of course, your marriage, which is not a bad thing. It's just the cloak you had protecting yourself at that time wasn't going to be what you're going to use going forward. Right. So now you're happily divorced, you know, ever yeah. after divorce. And obviously, we know when we think the words happily ever after, it's not going to I mean, do you want to be married again? I do want to be married again. And you know what? One of, one of the things that I want women and men to know, and which leads into the answer to that question. Uh, a lot of people think that when they have a breakup, that that's the end. Like, okay. life is over. They can't seem to see life on the other side. Yeah. But what I want people to know is that a breakup doesn't mean a breakdown. Right. And once you're able to um, make that decision to move through all the feeling, all the hurt, and then make a decision to just say, okay, now what do I need to do to move forward? Yeah. And you can see life in a, in a, um, in a brighter light again. You realize, for me at least, marriage is not a bad thing. I want, I love my marriage. I had a blast all 11 years. We had some downs, but I had a blast. And I do want to be married again. I will be smarter and wiser, and that man will have to come <laughs> correct. But absolutely, I want to be married again. That brother better not even know how to spell polyamorous. Man, let me fix <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> better stutter when he wants to say it. <laughs> he will have to be correct, but absolutely, I want to be married again. Okay. So that's interesting, folks. I mean, anything that you're in right now, any relationship that you're in, make sure you know who you are getting into it. And also, another drill that was dropped is know who you're getting into it with. Know yeah. their, their lineage. Know what goes on before them, you know. Know if their mom and dad were together. Know if maybe the mom and dad had grandparents that were together, you know. That kind of helps you understand what you're dealing with. And that's why I had to have Jennifer on the show because I, when I met her, I was already completely just impressed. At first, the book, because you know I like talking about divorce, because uh, I don't have any negative feelings towards divorce. I think divorce is like good things, and it has to happen sometimes. Sometimes, it ha obviously, it happens if you make the right decisions going in, then it wouldn't happen. But then again, sometimes you can make the right, perfect decisions and still be end up at divorce, which is okay. Uh, and I talked to Jennifer about this several times over about, you know, hey, this is great to have on the show. I definitely want to talk about this. I actually have been talking to her about doing a show called <laughs> Happily Ever After Divorce because I think that, and I don't want to get into too much of the details because a lot of stuff is in the book, but there are a lot of different processes. And when I say processes, there's actual physical processes that you have to go through with getting divorced and separating income and doing all different things that people are lost at. And I think these processes should be something you can think about get into any relationship, not just going through a divorce. I, I always say this. If I had to go through the same process to get divorced as I had to to get married, I would hold my marriage in a different type of uh, way of life. I'd hold it in a different light because I'd realize what I put into it. I realized what I put into it for the divorce. So what I'm saying is that I think if we had a show that talked about divorce and different processes, I think a lot of people get a lot out of it. So I have been leaning on Jennifer to do a show called Happily Ever After Divorce. So we can actually air something maybe once a quarter, maybe once a month, something where we talk about different processes and the positive stuff too. Dating after divorce, you know, um, the right way to get divorced, right attorneys to use, you know, and, and, and how to split income, how to look at maybe uh, time with kids and things like that. 
because a lot of these things you just don't know or don't understand, and someone always thinks someone's getting an advantage. It's not how it works. You know, it's not that someone's getting advantage of you. It's like, hey, we were people on this earth. We decided that we don't quite like each other anymore. You know, <laughs> and that's just what it is. Uh, uh, you said, why Nigerian weddings are so long? I don't know why. Fumi. Why? Are, I'm sorry. What's the name? Fumi. Oh, Fumi. I'm sorry. Yeah. I wasn't correcting you though. I was just shouting her out. Oh, because I don't really. <laughs> hey, I'll be honest. You said as far as Nigerian weddings are so long, I'm not Nigerian. The only thing I think of is that you mean as far as they last long or the, the ceremony? Because I'm a ceremony to be on point. I went to a few of them and I was jacked. <laughs> <laughs> I went to one that was Nigerian and Jamaican. I'm talking about I was at home. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I thought you were talking about maybe are they. Correct me on your question. You asked me probably why they last for a long time. Because I'm not sure if there's. I know in different cultures what uh, marriages last longer than other marriages as far as it relates to American culture, but that's the type of stuff we want to talk about. We want to talk about everything from weddings, divorces, to ceremonies, to customs, to different countries and what they do, because that's like, you just correct, I guess you just correct me and said, so they don't get divorced. You're right. You put all this time into something, you don't have to get divorced. You know, you should see the different cultures, different like customs that other, uh, you know, continents have when it comes to marriage. Or also, the actual definition of marriage. I think we are one of the, I guess we've evolved in our marriage being we marry for love. Well, originally that's not what marriage was for. It was it had nothing to do with love. It had something to do with actually making the family stronger, changing your social class, or um, building wealth within a within a certain uh, group of people. You know, as the famous Wu Tang, my seeds marry his seeds and marry his seeds. How we keep Wu Tang money all up in the family? <laughs> yeah, y'all might be too old for that one. I don't know, but I'm well, not too old, too young for that one. I don't know, but. That's what marriage originally was for, was to actually build strength. We've made it here in the United States more of a love thing of I married this person for this particular reason, when realistically, as some people will say that are in those, uh, so I guess not polyamorous, but which is the one where you have many wives. That's, that's polyamorous. Well, no, it's no, it's not. I'm sorry. No, that's um, a different one. That's uh, uh, many wives. You mean religious wives? No, just what? wives in general. Like you have more than one wife. Well, Muslims do. Uh, and Mormons do. So the thing about that relationship is most of those are built off businesses. It's just to keep the family stronger while they have that many wives. So they have a whole other custom too. And it does make sense. Because I've talked to a lot of women. They say, hey, this is what I want to do because now I have the, the, the children will be stronger. And, and we have more money coming to the house. We can do this all together. So polyagamous. Oh, polyagamous. I can't say all these words. Don't worry. You're not missing anything. Polyamorous. <laughs> she, no, this one's called. No, polygamous. That's what it is. A polygamous. Polygamous. Yes. Sorry, I, I feel like I'm in first, you know, second grade math or something. I ain't gonna do stuff. Uh, <laughs> a polygamist, that's what it is. We have many wives and build the family to be stronger. Um, some people I've talked to about that and they're like, yeah, it makes so much sense. And other people, women, will be like, oh no, we ain't doing that. You know, who knows what works for you? But that's what I want our show to be about is like all the different levels of marriage, all different levels of divorce, all different levels of why people connect and why they actually will stay together. I know people that's girlfriend and boyfriend have been together for 20 years. Oh, yeah. I don't know why you do that. Only thing scary about that, folks, is that if someone dies, guess who ain't getting nothing? Get nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, nothing. once again, if you're married, goes back to my point about being a business, you as a wife can collect something, or you as a husband can collect something to actually show that you were part of this union. Um, so, once again, guys, that's why I had Jennifer on. I wanted to talk about this book, and I also wanted to lean on her about doing this show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> happily wrapped the divorce. Um, any questions you guys have, hit us up. We're going to talk about another five minutes, and we got to get out of here, man. This, this is like, I usually keep these real ones to like right around 20, 25 minutes. I think we've already gone more than 20, 25 minutes. So, I want to know if you guys have any other questions, please let us know. Hit us up. Obviously, oh, give out your uh, social media again. So, I can be found on Facebook, uh, Jennifer Foster Speed, Jennifer F O S T E R slash S P as in Peter E E D. Or uh, Facebook page Happily Ever After Divorce, or email speed s p e e d dot j dot nineteen seventy seven at gmail dot com. Okay. And I want to say one more thing. Go ahead. I briefly touched on motivational speaking. So I'm also a loss coach. I want to put that out there. Okay. Um, and you know, my passion is to now, let a loss coach. What is that? Break that down. Relationship loss. Relationship loss coach. Y'all hear this? Relationship loss coach. And, and ladies, um, I'm a relationship game coach. Go ahead, I'm So I'm a relationship loss coach, just to like I said before, let women know that 
you know, you're not alone. You don't have to uh, break down. Life doesn't have to be over just because um, you have a breakup. And, you know, I just want to empower people, women, from stage, you can get to the most people. So I just want to empower women, and there's men out there as well, to let them know that after divorce, it's not over. I'm living the best life, let me just say, the best life. You're going back and, to and I have this coach, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> And I have this coach, Natalie Fike. She is the bomb. She is the bomb. Natalie, okay, Natalie. Fike. Yes. And so... Um, Anyway, I just want to put that out there, and I want to thank you for having me on here. Oh, I this thank awesome. you. This I mean, this, this is what we do. We try to make sure to reach different people. Now, we do have a question. Mm -hmm. Is there a follow-up to the book? What's coming Man, out next? so many people ask me that. Let It'll me be out in like three weeks, whatever Gabe, it is. It'll be out in three weeks. Gabe is not going to like this, my publisher, Gabe Wally. But I do not naturally write. I wrote this book because it was suggested to me, and I was like, okay, hey, why not? Um, but I don't enjoy writing. I enjoyed writing this book. Um, I'm going to write a book about um, infant loss. That's another part of my life. My ex-husband and I experienced infant loss. Um, but I don't, I probably won't write another book. But if I do, I'll come on here to talk about it. Please do. Please do. Be done in three weeks. We, we darned it. Look, she wrote a book while she wrote a pamphlet while we were on the show. She's writing that right now. She wrote a whole pamphlet or something. <laughs> Hey, well, I want to thank you for coming on. Once again, folks, check us out. As always, we do real ones. We're on YouTube at Real Talk to You, which is R E A L T A L K, the number two, the letter U. That's on YouTube. We're also on Facebook, as you should be on right now, at Real Talk to You. And then check our Instagram page out, Real Talk to You Media. So it's all the same stuff at the end, it's just media. We're all over the place. Um, like, share, subscribe, do it all, make suggestions. Hey, we do shows all over the place. This is one of our real one shows. We actually shoot a normal show, which is on Thursday nights live on Facebook, which is called Real Talk To You, where it's all about relationships. We shoot these shows here, which are called Real Ones. And then we also shoot shows called Real Truth, which hit hot topics. We recently just did a show on R. Kelly. That's on the Facebook page. It'll be on YouTube pretty soon. And also, we do what's called Poets Corner, where you'll see on our YouTube page a lot of poets that we record their sessions either at Cats Cafe or wherever they're at around Atlanta, and we actually post that to the page too. So we're all over the place recording a lot of different things. We're actually moving into comedy pretty soon. I was able to see uh, Little Rail last night at the Atlanta Comedy Theater. So we're going to be trying to move into comedy pretty soon. We get some comedians, not Little Rail. He won't be on my show this time. Well, let me not say that. Let me that. He may be on my he show. Existed. It's just he wasn't the one I went there for. I was trying to see the other comedians. Uh, but yes, so stay tuned. Stay watching our show, and hopefully. We'll have a divorce, happily ever after divorce show, <laughs> with yours truly here. We'll see. If, in, between, in between writing books and staying alive, she's going to do this show, too. She's like real superwoman, guys. All right, guys. So thanks hey. for tuning in. Uh, Check once out again, the book on Amazon. There you go. Check out the book. Yes, happily ever after. I think we already had one person get it, so please check out the book. It's all about her journey from going into a marriage that was with her best friend over 11 years to then finding out that at that point in time, he wanted something different. And then moving in her own journey to find out how to get from where she was at to dealing with being now divorced happily ever after. So check it out, guys. It's on Amazon. All right, we're Thank tuning you. out, guys.